Hello, and welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency, devoted to promoting musicians and authors worldwide. Call us today at 941 877 one five five two to start your free publicity evaluation. Remember, we shine only when we make you shine. Please welcome the host of Interviewing the Legends, music journalist, author, and entrepreneur, Ray Shasho. Hello once again, everyone. I'm your host, Ray Shasho. Welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends on BBS Radio. Brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call us today at 941-877-1552 or email us at publicityworksagency.com. Remember, we shine only when we make you shine. California native Jack Russell is a rock vocalist and songwriter and a founding member of early 80s hard rock radio staples, Great White, citing influences like Robert Plant, Steven Tyler. Russell spent his formative years fronting high school bands. In 1977, he co-founded the band Dante Fox alongside guitarist Mark Kendall. 1981, the band changed its name to Great White, and in 84, the group issued its eponymous debut, debut album via EMI. Great White hit it big in 1987 when their third LP, Once Bitten, which featured the hit single Rock Me, and again in 1989 with Twice Shy, which included their chart-topping cover of Ian Hunter's Once Bitten, Twice Shy. Russell left the group in 1996 to pursue a solo career and released Shelter Me in 99 via MP Records. That same year saw Russell rejoin the band, but by 2001, Great White had called it quits, uh, holding a farewell show on New Year's Eve at the Galaxy Theater in Santa Ana, California. The following year saw Russell begin touring under the name Jack Russell's Great White. The outfit gained international attention in 2003 after a massive pyrotechnics failure at the station nightclub in Rhode Island set fire to the venue's ceiling, resulting in the deaths of 100 contragoers. By 2005, the stress from lawsuits, inner band turmoil, and Russell's substance abuse had taken a toll in Jack Russell's Great White ceased operations. The original lineup of Great White reformed for a tour and released their 10th studio album, Back to the Rhythm, in 2007. Another studio LP, Rising, uh, followed in 2009, but it would be Russell's last outing with the group. In 2001, after a period of uh, recuperation following multiple back surgeries stemming from a fall in 2009, a newly sober Russell began operating once again under the Jack Russell's Great White moniker. In 2017, the band released its debut studio album. He saw it coming via Frontiers Records. Please welcome singer, songwriter, musician, producer, and founding member of American rock band Great White, Jack Russell, to Interviewing the Legends. Hey, Jack. I'm doing good. We we know you're 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 hurting. You had a bad night. You just had back surgery about three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, what else is new? You know, <laughs> you know I've, had, I've had so many surgeries that doctors don't know me by my first name. I know, I know. I know. I, I, um, no, it's all good. It's all good. I'm uh, uh, they're just taking care of what I've been beating up for the last 41 years. You know, you keep smashing stuff down. You know, running around on stage and pounding around and jumping and backflips and everything else. Kind of beat you up, you know? Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, but I feel good. That's feel good. I feel, uh, <laughs> I'm ready to go. I'm, I got a show actually tomorrow night. You're kidding me. You gonna make it? Orlando. <laughs> Hell no, man. Down the, down the stop city. <laughs> mm. I don't slow down, man. They tell me I can. I just, I just say, yeah, I think so. It's all for rock and roll. That's probably why I'm so messed up is I don't listen. Yeah. You know, it, it, a lot of people don't realize the torture you guys go through 
you know, being on, up on stage. I know a lot, a lot of rock stars who had hip, hip surgery and replacement hips, including guys like oh, Paul yeah. Stanley, you know? Oh, a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting ready to have my hips done. Um, you know, you just beat yourself up. I mean, the, the amount of pressure and, you know, just, just grinding on your bones. Mm-hmm. And as you get older, you know, um, your bones deteriorate. Yeah, I have degenerative disc disease and scoliosis. And so, you know, I've, um, I'm pretty well, I'm pretty well burned out. But, uh, my voice feels great. It's better than it's ever been. I mean, I'm hitting notes I was hitting when I was 25. So, I, you know, as long as it keeps working, keep doing it. I was talking to Steven Tyler, you know, uh, a while ago and, and, you know, he's just, you know, he's still doing it. And I, I asked him, I go, so, you know, uh, are you still singing 440 or are you tuned down to E, to e flat? Like mm-hmm. pretty much everybody else in the business does. He goes, no, nah, man. He goes, I still, still sing them like I wrote them, just like the movies. <laughs> and I was laughing. I'm going, man, you know, that's, for a guy that's 71 years old, yeah. singing, you know, in E, which is, you know, the true E, true 440, you know. Um, is, is, it's, most bands, like, everybody from the 80s, most bands, period, sing an E flat. You can't really, you know, you can't really tell, you know, it's, it's only a half a step down, you know, I mean, certain musicians can go, oh, wow, wait a minute, I think they're tuned down a little bit. Now you got bands like Weir that tune down to like D, you know, the strings are like flopping on their neck. Right, right. And, you know, they're too hungry. <laughs> I mean, you can tell. <laughs> it sounds a little low, you know. Yeah. But uh, God bless them. So there's hope. There's hope for us all. Well, the good, the good thing is, I mean, your body might be falling apart, but like you said, your voice sounds great, and that's the important part. <laughs> You know? Well, that is that is the important part, you yeah. know. And, and I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not geriatric here. I mean, uh, I just had a surgery. So yeah. I've had oh, a yeah. bunch of you know, I'm, I'm gonna have a bunch more. Um, if I can get three or four more faces in by the time I go, I'll do that too. You know, I keep having to my ears touch. Yeah. You know? um, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like I want to look good, man. Sure. Or as good as you can. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, you know, it's it's you do what you got to do to do what you got to do. Right. Right. You know, I mean, I I love being on stage. It's it's what I have ever wanted to do in my whole life. Mm-hmm. It's what I've dreamt of since I was a you know a wee little lad, and um, I'm still doing it. So my life has been just one big cartoon. But that's what that's what keeps you young, man. Just being up, being out there on stage, you know. It, oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I wake up every once. I hear like the. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> the is, you know? Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, as you can tell, I'm, I'm my heart is jerky. But um, yeah, I, uh, I, I feel I act. You know, my. Some of my best friends are like my my son's kids mm-hmm. and, and you know, my, my son's kids, my grandkids, and mm-hmm. idiot. Um, you know, and his, and his friends and their friends, and uh, they just can really relate to me because mm-hmm. I'm on the same level. Right. You know? um, older people, they don't seem to really get me. They look at me like I got lobsters crawling on my ears. <laughs> Blame you, man. You guys, you guys, you know, I, I looked at YouTube. Once bitten, twice shy has got 18 million views. 18 million, 619,320. That's incredible. You know that? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good number. Yeah, I think there's a, I think there's another site where there's more. Really? It, it depends on who puts up. I mean, I've, you know, there's several sites like, uh, um, This makes me happy to say this. We counted up the number of, uh, and I'm just saying this just to be a jerk. Right. 
Right. <laughs> Which I can be sometimes. We, uh, <laughs> we, uh, can lift a number of views from our last single and then the other band's last single and we're like a hundred thousand over so we're like giddy like school kids. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, yep. You've got, um... That's all, that's all rock stars are, is a bunch of kids, you know, yeah. running around like idiots. You've got, uh, Dan McNay in bass in your band now. I know Dan from, uh, Montrose and Ronnie yeah. Montrose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Dan's a great guy. He's a good guy. He's a sweetheart. He's like, yeah. he's one of my favorite people in the band, you know. He's just one of those goofy, knucklehead guys. Right. And start laughing about something in the airport. <laughs> we have to like leave we'll just be giggling the line <laughs> you know we'll have to like walk away from each other because one guy gets one look at the other guy and just explodes in laugh <laughs> and we're laughing about absolutely nothing <laughs> I mean we we don't even know what starts it it's just a look yeah and then, then it was, it's all over so <laughs> sometimes I have to separate us <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's funny I, I got a suggestion. Can, is there any way you can incorporate the Jaws theme into your, your opening when you come out on stage? <laughs> you know, we used to do that. Did we you did really? That, and we still do sometimes. That's so cool. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's great. I mean, we got a big, big PA, a big room. I mean, it really rattles the place, mm -hmm. man. You got a lot of, a lot of stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. I know, that, that was, that's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite movie of all times. I watch that movie every single day. I know, I know, me too. I live on a boat called the Orca. Yeah, you, oh, it's I called the a, Orca, really? Uh, I have a Orca yeah. gun, just like Clint had in the movie. I actually have one of the actual barrels from the movie. Oh, yeah, uh, cool. A buddy of mine you know, bought it for me. He's a famous painter. Uh -huh. He lives out in Martha's Vineyard. And he knows everybody that was in the cast and everybody that had been anything with the movie. And, um, they made like a hundred of those barrels for, uh, mm -hmm. floating bars and for cameras and things like that. And there was actually twelve, um, made for the movie. They had five on the first or the mm -hmm. real one, five on the fiberglass orca with the breakaway transom for that scene with the shark jumps on the boat. And there was two more that they swam in on at the end. Well, I have one of the ones they swam in on. You can, you can take it, watch that scene in the movie, you get every single scratch on the barrel is exactly the same. So it's like it definitely have its problems, you know. So, um, where do you keep the, where do you keep the barrel? I made it into a table in my, in uh -huh. my boat up on top. Oh, cool. That, that's awesome. That is really cool. I, I love that movie. My favorite part too is when they're all sitting around, uh, and he ta and yeah, he talks about the, um, uh, you know, the shit that. Table, he, they're talking, doing the, doing the scars thing. And he goes, yeah, yeah. He said, "Mary, slamming two slamming two torpedoes in their side chief. We just come back for the island of Timmy and the Lee. Just get back for delivering the bomb. <laughs> the bomb. Yeah, that was a great scene. You do a good imitation." <laughs> You do a great imitation. Well, I can recite the whole thing. I mean, you know, well, it's like an eight minute deal. It's total, total. It's almost eight minutes. But, you know, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people don't realize Robert Shaw, you know, I remember him in a James Bond movie, um, uh, uh, from Russia with Love. He was the villain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he did a lot of movies. He did a woman that won. I really liked. Um, oh god, it was a uh, black and white movie. Ah, of course I can't think of the name right now. But, uh, yeah, he was, uh, he was a fantastic actor. He never got to see the, uh, success of Jaws. He died at 51, uh, like a year after the movie was made. Yeah. Um, shortly after that, he was driving back to his home and mm -hmm. took her in Ireland. <laughs> Wasn't feeling good, got out the car, fell down, and died of a massive heart attack. Yeah, they have a plaque over there where he died, I think. Yeah, I saw that. It's in that rock. Yeah. 
Exactly. And so that's so. Uh, well, I didn't know you knew about all that. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, I yeah, I did a lot of research on him. He's he he was a very very cool actor. Good good guy. Yeah. It's amazing. His voice, his his real voice sounded nothing like the Clint. I know. Voice, you know, it was, it was his real voice was so much higher and so lovely, you know. It was, yep. it was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, that just shows the talent and the ability of the actor he was, you know, to be able to uh, jump into the role. I mean, because I don't think there was anybody, and they had other guys up for the role. They had, you know, Dustin Hoffman and Hooper, mm-hmm. and they had uh, some other bumble foots, I can't remember his name. I mean, he's a good actor, but. I mean, he was an American Western actor, you know, for right. the most part. Right. And they had him cast, and they were thinking about him, and uh, he just would have been a farce. Mm-hmm. I mean, nobody could have played that part like he did. Right. He was a great actor. No, but he was. Perfect. There was a little... I said, Mr. Iverson, you're going to get along a lot of them. You're going to get along really well. <laughs> yeah, he treated... He treated um... Uh, Drive is like a kid, you know, because he was. Well, you know, apparently <laughs> drivers came in, you know, yeah. growing up. You know, I should be a cheat, I should be a spazos. But everybody would come in with rounds of applause, and, you know, and he's like, what this little punk kid has done anything he hasn't done, you know, um, Shakespeare on Broadway, and this guy, you know, he should all had, like, you know, credentials at the game. Right. You know, and, and, and but at that time, you know, Dreyfus hadn't done that much. Mm-hmm. He hadn't been really a reporter. He'd done, he'd done a few good movies, you know, but nothing to the uh, extent of Robert Shaw. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I just saw a movie with him the other day, and a new movie. Um, he, God, he lost a ton of weight. Mm-hmm. He, he looked like uh, Richard Dreyfuss again, because he had blown up for oh, a while. Wow. I mean, I mm. saw him there with yeah. and he looked like he, he looked like a fox. Yeah, he did. Um, and, he, yeah. and then he just did this movie. It's just like these, uh, these kind of inbred good people. Mm-hmm. They kidnap uh, um, some guy's son. I can't, I can't remember who it was. Anyway, the guy went back and uh, the mom shot him and, and, and you know, got, got the kid back. Mm-hmm. It was a really good movie. I can't remember the name of it, but it was, it was a more recent movie. And he still, he looks, he still looks decent, yeah. you know? Yeah. But now that he's dropped the weight, because, yeah. I mean, I thought like, he's gone, he, he was going to go out and gain it, you know? Right. Well, I want to talk about your latest album, He Saw It Coming. I give it five stars, man. <laughs> I, That's I, what I gave it. I, I, I love the album. Good. I was really shocked how how I mean, you guys have always been a great band, but now it's even better, in my opinion. <laughs> well, I think so too. I mean, I I got to excuse me, I got to uh, have a lot more. <clears throat> well, not like I didn't have influence mm-hmm. in the band because I did. It was mostly my stuff. <laughs> Especially toward the end. Right. You know, and, but I was writing more consistently with, with, you know, Mike, Michael toward the end, not so much with Mark. Mark's, Mark's ideas had kind of petered out. Right. You know, you just get into more of a, um, you know, not a, very long kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And that's not where I'm at at all. So, consequently, I started writing with Michael Moore. Mm-hmm. And the songs had a different feel. So, you know, when I met Robbie, we started writing together. Right. It was like, you know, it's like, okay, this is perfect. Yep. You know, he's got... uh Really great, amazing musical chops as far as, you know, production and arranging and, you know, I have ideas that, that he just 
and looks at me like, what? Mm -hmm. That ain't gonna work. Yeah. I mean, it's good as trust me, man. Yeah. Like, Jack Flash showed me he saw it come and he's like, I, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. I go, dude, just trust me, trust me. Picture the stones in a sleazy bar room playing to nobody. <laughs> but the guy, because the guy mopping the floor, right. you know, a couple at a table smoking cigarettes, having a drink. Yeah. Bartender wiping down the bar. But they're up there being the sound, just sweating and grooving, playing some kick, you know, killer beat. Right. I go, just picture that. Mm -hmm. And he goes, okay, I got it. <laughs> so, you know, and then like, when he hit Kim with, with uh, when he came up, I was like, what? Now when he came up with, uh, um, oh, God, come on. Was that uh, God, Godspeed. Godspeed? Godspeed. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's called. Right. Yeah. That was originally going to be an acoustic guitar mm -hmm. and a vocal. We wrote it like that. He goes, dude, let me try something different with a song. I go, well, we tried something. He goes, well, let me take this song and try to make a, an a cappella song out of it. I go, like what? Like what? Like the guys with the cats and the hands and, I mean, the hats and the canes and the, the red, white, red <laughs> suit. You know what I mean? Like that. That's a great yeah, song. Great, great track, man. You got, you guys, it, sh it just shows how eclectic you can be. You know, you can do anything, really, you know, if you wanted to. Well, um, that's the fun thing about, you know, music is mm -hmm. just an expression of your emotions. Sure. Exactly. You know, and to me, I can take me anywhere and I can take mm -hmm. whoever along with me, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, I never have uh, seen what I'm going to write about before I write it. I just start writing, you know, and whatever comes out, comes out, so every song takes on life of its own, sure. really. Exactly. You know, uh, so it's, uh, it's an adventure, that's for sure. Oh, it's you know, we, uh, we never yeah. know what's going to come out. I'm looking forward to the new album, we're about halfway done. Oh, really? We've got, yeah, we've got the, uh, one spitting, uh -huh. one spitting, um, um, one show, Acoustical Bites, that's coming right. out real soon. Right. And we also have a great Zeppelin 2 coming out. Oh, cool. That, that's a, that was a great project, Jonathan man. Fox yeah. put out, um, which is a bunch of demos from like, you know, 78 right. to 81, 82, something like that. And, uh, to the chagrin of my partner, is anyone too happy about it? <laughs> <laughs> but I say, hey man, they're my masters, all the least on the one. I want people to get an idea yeah. of what the band was sure. when I was 17 years old. Right, and, right. and, you know, how amazing, you know, is it how far they had come from then to now. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and just uh, the. I don't know, it's like, if somebody said, hey man, would you like to hear some of Steven Tyler's demo tapes? Mm -hmm. What are you going to say? No. <laughs> I'd be like, God, where I stand in line to hear that? <laughs> you know, and it might not have been the best. You might go, oh, well, it's not, that's not the greatest thing in the world, but man, that guy could sing. Yeah, he can. It's you know, true. so, and that's what it was about. If that's what it was I mean, I wanted to mm -hmm. see, I wanted the people to see what I was like when I was a young kid. Right. It was pretty amazing. Uh, and I mean, I, I mean that with all humility. I'm not sitting and trying to grow and pat myself on the back and uh -huh. saying, you know, what a great singer I am. I am a guy 
God, you know, lets me be. <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes he lets me have a good night, sometimes he lets me have a bad night, you know. But um, I just kind of wanted to give the people an idea what the band was when we started out and why we kept going with it. Maybe they'll see the same thing I did, maybe they won't. But it's, you know, it's for just for fun. Well, the album's great, man. You're, you're like I said, your voice is great. You know, you haven't changed. It's, it's getting better, if, if anything. I, I really mean that. Thanks. I really, I'm, I'm really happy with, uh, you know, um, can't get this. I mean, I mean that though. I mean, um, back, he saw it coming. Mm-hmm. That, uh, that record, I think the vocals on that are really, really good. I was really happy with the songs we chose and, and the way they were, the way they came across. You know, the back to the rhythm, um, was, I mean, was good, but, uh, Can't Get There to Me was one of my favorite records. Mm -hmm. That one, I think, and he saw it coming. Um, I think, but if I had to pick one, I have to say, uh, he saw it coming. Right. Just because of, <clears throat> I think what you said here, the band is a better band. Mm -hmm. It is a better band. Yep. You, you know, you know what I hear, and he saw it coming. I hear a little bit of Queen, Queen. And, and, and a little bit of the Beatles. You know, a little bit of the Beatles. Oh yeah, you can't, I, I'm just you, you. You would crap yourself right now. I'm looking over on my bench at my on my one of my couches upstairs in my in my uh, my boat, and there's a Queen jacket. Really. That's weird. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That is yeah, crazy. Yeah, those are my two favorite bands. When I was That's a kid. crazy. And I heard it in the music. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing, huh? Yeah. It's Queen like. The Beatles, I mean. Yeah. Queen. Uh, yeah, I got a Queen jacket and I got a, a Beach Boys jacket. Awesome. Too, not Beach Boys, I mean, uh, Beatles. Yep. Uh, on uh, Blame It on the Night, I, I heard a little Alice Cooper and a little Blue Oyster Cult, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I got, got that, too. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, Alice was, uh, uh, he was the first guy, the first rock guy uh -huh. I ever got into, you know. I used to paint my eyes and go to school like that. Oh, really? School. Wow. Yeah, people, they're going, who is this guy? <laughs> you on that. I don't want to be the regular guy, you know. I I, I had real long yeah, hair in high school. Boring people in the world, man. Yeah, I'm not like that at all. But me, me and you got the. I don't know if you still have it. We have the same goatee. Mine, mine's just like yours. I don't know if you still have it or not. Oh hell yeah! I have yeah, it. yeah. I got the same one. I got. I, I went to a barber shop there. Yeah. I had a yeah. Had a razor cut. Had a whole thing shaved. It was straight razor. <laughs> With a straight I've never, razor. I always wanted to do that. I've never done it before. Yeah, like the old I mean, ways. Yeah, really. I feel like I go, man. You know, you, you have no idea what's in your hands right now. But <laughs> please be careful. <laughs> you know, what I mean? if you're gonna slice somebody's throat, please don't make money of that first one. Did, did, who who did it? The barber. Murder. The barber did it for you. Yeah, I went yeah. to. A, I actually had the barber shave. Mostly they shave. Wow. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, I never tried that. Yeah, it came out great, man. But, you yeah. know, every time I shave, I'm going to spend 40 bucks. You're out of your mind. <laughs> you know? You can get a drive over the barber shop every day for freaking hour. You know, I was just like, no. I'm going to stick it half of my day. <laughs> I hate shaving. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it gets pretty long in the winter. Yeah. yeah you got to trim it. You were very honest about your song, My Addiction, too. That that was a great song. 
<laughs> well, song. you know, I try, I try to uh, be real, um, I, you know, autobiographical and, and and transparent with my songwriting. I mean, in a sense, I don't write fiction. Mm-hmm. You know, right? Never wanted to. Right. Um, the only thing I know is what I've lived through. So that's uh, where I write about. You know, there's nothing, uh, uh, like I said, I'm not going to write about something I'm not, I'm not real familiar with. Right, right. Mean, it just sounds like it's not real. Sure. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love yes, but some of the stuff that, uh, you know, Anderson sings is, you know, rivers and streams and flying unicorns and, you know, <laughs> I just can't sing my teeth. Well, I don't know. Maybe a unicorn tastes pretty good. I don't know. But I'm uh, barbecue going around barbecue unicorns or Jonza. Oh, that's a prog rocker, you know. Prog, prog rock is a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, I, I used to be in a prog rock band. I heard, yeah. I heard. Uh, uh, yeah, I like prog rock. Uh, I do like it. Yeah. I do too, man. Don't get me wrong. I'm yeah. putting on Yes, I love Yes. I, I play them all the time. I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah, I talked with, I had John Anderson on the show. That's amazing. I've seen that guy live and I've never seen him missing out. Mm hmm. Never. And that's, uh, that's saying something. I've seen a lot of bands and <coughs> I've done a lot of shows and, you know, I'm usually pretty good. Mm -hmm. I usually, uh, can keep up, you know, unless I'm sick or something, but, yeah. um, you know, I'm, I, I some guys just have the gift, you know. Um, that guy's one of them. Who are some of your buddies in the rock rock field besides uh, uh, Stephen Tyler? Uh, Tyler. Um, uh, let's see. Well, you know, I know the guys from the eighties, guys, the guys from the war. Mm -hmm. You know, Rat and God. I mean. <laughs> Pretty much name it. All the bands in the '80s, Cinderella. You know, Tom Keeper, he's great. Um, there, there was so we had, we came at such an up and on such an electric time. Yeah. It, yep. You know, at that time it was rock and roll was huge. Mm -hmm. It will never be that big again. Unfortunately. You know, rock and roll will never be that big. It will, there will never be that kind of record sales. Yeah. There will never be that many arena tours. Nope. <laughs> you know, with millions of bands, some millions of records. You know, it's just not going to happen. That's a shame. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I had but, uh, yeah, so we were there. Yep. I I hope history repeats itself, you know. I really do. I hope it comes back. That would be nice. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't see it mm -hmm. just because people are they're so they don't nothing tangible is important. Mm -hmm. Like why buy an album I can just put it on my headphones and just download it or yeah. stream it or whatever, you know. I mean why walk all why go all the way to the store. Mm -hmm. Have to get out of my car, walk around the store. What if they don't have it? I know. Oh my God! Then I think it's in the car again. Yeah. Go to another store, and then I gotta reach in and pull out my wallet. <laughs> oh God! I mean, just think of the torture involved in buying one little record. Yeah. You know, it, it's just, and then you gotta take it home, and then you gotta put it somewhere. You know. Just taking a space. Who cares what's on it? Who cares who the players are? Who cares who produced it? Who cares about all that stuff? I don't, you know? Yeah. I mean, I was, I was a guy that stood in line the night before. Me too. You know, and I was running home, I'm racing on a bicycle. Yeah. And that thing was like, you know, like the tree of life, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I would like take a razor blade and gingerly cut open the shrink wrap. Yeah. You know, and that was pull me. the record out. And <laughs> it was like a ceremony. That was me. You know, you, uh, you, uh, you know, you, you, you read every single line. Yeah. You're like, oh, wow, this was produced by, oh, this is a, by, this is engineered by Eddie Kramer. Oh, wow, that's so cool. Well, you must be important. 
produced it. There's no way. <laughs> no way you know what produced means. Yeah. Just the you album. Know, but he must be really important because he's the one that produced it. Yeah. You know, what, what does that mean? Does that mean he made it? it what did he do? I don't know what those cool. There's no other records, so you got to be wonderful. Yeah, I remember you were saying riding your bike. I did the same thing. I remember stalking the record store guy about the Uriah Heep's uh, Stealing album because I was so excited. You know, wow, Uriah Heep, new album coming out, you know, and Stealing was on the radio, and, uh, you know, it was so exciting. You know, that's all I thought about. <laughs> yeah. Uriah Heep, that's such a great band. Yeah. Such a great band, man. Yeah, I know. I what was that big hit? Uh, well, they they had um, Easy Living. They had Stealing. That's it. That's it. That's what I'm thinking for. Easy Living. Yep. There you go. There you go. And then they had that later one. That, that, I mean, the, the one that was like in the eighties. They had Stealing. Then they had I don't know after after Byron. They had a couple of hits, I guess. You know, I, I like I like the uh, I like the, the the band with uh, David Byron in it. That, that was my favorite band. What was the, what was the hit me? Um, that was after David Byron, I guess. I don't know who was the singer back then. Um, I can't remember. I'm trying to remember the song. I went and bought the uh, the record because uh -huh. of that. Yeah, I hate when I can't remember stuff like that. It makes me feel like, well, I'm losing my memory with that. Um, Might have been with John Lawton. Yeah. John Lawton, maybe, was the uh, the singer? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, that was a great band. I mean, there were so many great bands in the 70s. There were a lot of great bands in the 80s, <clears throat> too, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. But the problem was, is the 80s was like this... Okay, let's find the formula. We got MTV now. When MTV came out, it was right. what, what do you think of MTV, Jack? What do you think? I go, yeah. it's going to be the death <laughs> of our music. <laughs> so what are you talking about? I go, it's going to be the death of us. Yeah. It, it's going to be great for a while. How long do you think it can go without commercials? Yep. How long? How do you think? Who's going to pay for it? We will. That was, the end, that was the end of the you DJ. Know, commercials and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, yeah. we're all over MTV and we're setting these records. Uh -huh. And then, they found the formula. Yep. Guys with long hair, you know, looking good, good-looking dudes, with spiked out, poofed out hair, right. running around with hot chicks in it. Bingo, that's the formula. That's they the formula. signed every band that even looked at like Nelson. Mm -hmm. And not that they were bad, but I mean, you know, if they didn't have the hair at that time, I don't think they even got to look that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's bands like Danger Danger and Tora Tora and mm -hmm. Zozo Zozo and The Buzz. I mean, people you never heard about that never would have got a, a deal in their life if it wasn't because they looked it. Yep. You know, and, sure. and, and, you know, good for them, good for them, whatever yeah. the case may be. It's not an easy thing to do, you know, but it, it, it pulled the bottom out of the music business because when it went to go on the radio, it wasn't sustainable. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was good on MTV because all the chicks could see the visual and yep. the, the songs didn't really matter. Yep. But when you put it on radio and there was no video to watch along with it, it was like, this is crap. <laughs> I don't want to watch this, but I don't want to buy this for. <laughs> so they were wearing everything, and then pretty soon it was all homogenized, pasteurized. Everything sounded the same. Everything looked the same. There was like 25 rats, you know, 13 Guns N' Roses, 90, yep. 95 Motley Crews, you know, 10 Great Whites. You know, it's like everybody had its clone, you know, 30 yeah. Dawkins, you know, and, um, Everybody just got lost. Yeah. And um, what was the? Uh, I always talk to like, you know, what the first video MTV played was. The first one. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't the Buggles, was it? Video kill the radio star. Oh uh, yeah, that's right, the Buggles. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That was the video kill the radio yeah, star. I, yeah. Yeah. When, when I heard that, I was that's pathetic. <laughs> 
Well, nothing is nothing is as pathetic as Disco Duck. Okay, <laughs> that's the yeah, worst song of all time. Because I was going to redo that on the new <laughs> <laughs> He said you had taste in music. Rick, uh, Rick D's. <laughs> Disco Duck. Disco and Duck. Uh, that was a uh, I could have done that. Uh, and it was a hit. The skin, the skin <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, that's that's a crazy. Huh? <laughs> I can't see that haircut, so it makes him laugh. <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather have a mohawk sideways. <laughs> sideways you know, sideways mohawk. Side I don't know what you call it, but whatever. Yeah, one of those and up. You, you know who you I had on the. Head. Jack, you know who I had on the show recently? You probably know him. Uh, Frankie Benelli from Quiet Riot. Yeah, of course. Yeah, good guy. I, I love Frankie. Frankie. He's, you know, of course, he's got stage four cancer, which is is hard. Oh my god, I, I just can't believe it. But he, he, so sa- he so sounds good, great. The guy sounds great. You know, I just can't believe it. You know, I, I, I just, man, that kind of stuff makes me cry. I know. It makes me just, you know. I know. Good guy too. Real good guy. Yeah, a real good guy. You know? Yeah, real good guy. I know. Very I sad. Make you think, like, man, I'm getting older now, you know? Yeah. But Stephen Tyler's still here, and he's 13 years old than me, so I hang on to that, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're holding on to that, huh? <laughs> hang on, that was death grip, no pun intended. That's your be- benchmark. <laughs> well, you got a lot of, a lot of uh, dates coming up, including one here. You know, I'm in Sarasota, Florida. You got Orlando coming up, right? Yeah, that's this, uh, that's day after tomorrow. The 16th, yep. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the day after tomorrow. Yeah, Church, Church we'll Street. Tomorrow. Yeah. To go there. Yeah, I'll be standing there or sitting on a stool. <laughs> I'm not supposed to move. I wasn't even supposed to get on a plane for two months. Really? Yeah, oh yeah, the doctor said, no way. Well, take care of yourself, you man. Gig? <laughs> I said, yeah. I go, I got to play. I got to do shows at book. I don't know how you're going to do it. That's, that's tough. Well, very carefully. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I'll just worry about my voice and not worry about running around. So my, my band runs around. They can, yeah, let they them run around. For me. I don't have to look like an idiot. They can do the job. <laughs> I'm going to promote some of your dates here. Right after Orlando, you go to uh, Colorado Springs on the 7th. Uh, then you get a little break. On the 14th, you'll be in Ohio. Uh, then uh, th- that's December 14th. And then December 19th, you're going to be in Indianapolis. January, you're going to be at the Golden Nugget Hotel. Wow, that's cool. January 3rd. Have you ever played the uh, the, the uh, casinos before? Oh yeah, yeah, we really? did the casino stuff. You know, not a lot of them. We played, we played a number of them. That's pretty cool. Uh, not like us, the, yeah. the freaking residency. <laughs> 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 Living at the MGM Grand, getting paid a million dollars a night. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you suck. <laughs> Maybe you'll get more dates in the future, you know, for casino. Yeah, for right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would love to do a residency. That's That'd a good gig. Great. But then again, I would put my back up against the wall, you know. Uh, you got to get some rest first uh, before you go out there, you know. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, excuse me. I just got up, so. Yep. <clears throat> I, 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 I hate to have to, you know, have a. a tight schedule anymore. I'm kind of really? like where Steven's at. I like to be yeah. like one show, couple of days off, one show, couple of days off, mm-hmm. two shows, three days off, you know. I don't blame you. One show, five days off. Yeah, you know, just take it easy, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you did, all, you did all the heavy lifting already back back in the day. It's, it's time yeah, to change. Yeah. It's not, it's not fun when you're having to work. Yeah, I agree. 
You know, you can always be a producer, you know, produce other new new artists and, you know, own a record yeah, company, you know. You know. Producing all kind of stuff. Yeah. It's not money, really. Really? I don't think about it now. Unless, unless you strike gold with some huge artist, some hip-hop artist. You know, they got their own little clique of people. Right, you know? right. And break it in. Hey, some serious some 80s guy wants to come in and produce his <laughs> riff with a hip-hop band. He says he can really make his rock. <laughs> no, we'll just stick with the last guy that sold the 50 million records, you know? Yeah. So, it's, uh, you know, it, it, people, it's like songwriting. Who wants to write songs? I've got so many country songs I wrote. Really? Some of the most beautiful songs I wrote never. Uh-huh. And I can't get them to anybody. Well, you know what? It's like a brick, it's like a brick wall. Well, why don't, send me, well, send, these people, Jack, right? send, send me some of your uh, best songs. I know the Oak Ridge Boys. I know some of the country guys. You know? Okay, yeah, well, I'll have to, I'll have to find some of those too, because I've got songs for those from when I wrote. Um, that is just gorgeous, you know. I know some it's of the country guys. I have songs that I wrote for certain people. Right. And I said, okay, well, I'll put this, you know, these guys in mind because mm-hmm. I got their sound, so then I'll, you know, I'll go from there. So yeah, let me, uh, let me dig through my archives. Okay. I gotta run to the storage when I get back and I'll see you know, so. I'll send, I'll That's send, uh, I'll send Bill. I'll send Billy James my email address to, uh, so he can forward it to you. And uh, like I said, I know a lot of guys in Nashville. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> that'd be great. I really love that. I appreciate it. It's worth a shot. Why not? Yeah, man. Yeah. I'll give you a cut. I'll cut you in. All right. That's cool. Yeah. Little chicken mine gives out for your head. Yeah, the Oak Ridge boys are cool guys, and they and they do a lot for new artists also. So they, they, they'd be a good one. Jack, Jack here's, yeah, a, yeah. Here, here's a question yeah. I, I ask everybody, and I get some interesting answers. Uh, if you had a field of dreams like the movie to perform, collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who would that be? Oh, it would be, uh, you know, geez, the Beach Beatles. <laughs> 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 That's the Beach Boys with the Beatles. The Beach Beatles. Really big band. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> George Martin um, producing. Yep, he was awesome. Um, if it, no, if I had to pick one band to, to collaborate with, God, I'd have to say, uh, you know, uh, Aerosmith, I'd have to say. Yeah, I could see you in Aerosmith. Yeah, I could, uh, if I, yeah. Why don't you ask Steven Tyler to, to do a duet with you or something, huh? You know, he, I have, he's been, she is so busy, that guy, man. Yeah. It's like, I know, I mean, I'm busy, right? Right. You know, I'm, I do nothing to to him, you know, but I can't find time to, you know, call my lady. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? She's out running around doing all kinds of stuff so we can leave tomorrow. Right. I'm here at home getting my stuff together. Right, right. And having to be really careful because of my back. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, yeah. One of these days we'll get some done me and him together. I've got a couple of songs I've written for the uh, for the uh, uh, we'll get it together one of these days. But you know, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, that's all right. You know, it's funny, I've been I've been the in between guy to a lot of people because I know a lot of people and they don't usually hook up. Like you said, they're too busy, but I give them the message. <laughs> that's you awesome. Know? Yeah. I got, yeah, that's awesome. I got the that's Runaways. Awesome. I got the Runaways together. You. I got the <laughs> Runaways together with uh, Susie Quattro because they they always wanted to talk to her, so I hooked hooked her up because I I've had Susie on the show a couple of times. So yeah, I do stuff like that. <laughs> oh, what a trip! The Runaways with Susie Quattro. Yeah. Do anything? What's that? 
Do they ever become my enemy? No, they just kind of hooked up to, together and started talking. Lita Ford talked to her and Sheree Sh- Curry. Uh, didn't get uh, a, a hold of uh, Joan. Joan's the one who really copied her style, you know? Oh, yeah, I know. Joan is a fucking key all that. Uh, yeah, yep. And that's, uh, yeah, she's the key to that. She's a sweet, you're all sweet. You're beautiful as one of us. Lita's uh, cool. I mean, she really is. She's one of us. Uh, Lita's cool. I met her the Yeah. A lot of shows together. And, you know, it was, she's just a great girl. <laughs> you, you were talking about the oh, Beach yeah, Boys. <clears throat> I just had uh, David March on the show too, one of the original Beach Boys. Yeah, Who? David Marks. Did you know him? No. Yeah, he's an original Beach Boy. He was there um, right from the beginning. He was um, their neighbor, and he left right after because him and Murray had a, a feud together. And then he's been back a few times for the fiftieth anniversary and, and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Man, so so the pot pot the pot is oh, seven thousand. It's horrible. Yeah. God, it's a millions upon millions. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. That's they 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 exi- You know, after a while they fired them, but it's just too late. Well, yeah. After that, you have to get all the money. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Jack, you have anything else you'd like to promote or chat about? Did we cover you know it? I just want to say thank you sure. for your time and thank you about the listening for their time. And for those of you that turned the dial while I was talking, screw you. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't really turn dials anymore, do you? I know. You do. You just kind of like telepathically exactly. the, the listening device. <laughs> Well, this goes. Hi, right, brother. Yeah, uh, I brother want to thank Sean. you, man. Thank you so much. Hey, take care of yourself. I hope your back gets feeling better real soon. Okay. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon. I'll keep your number. I'll get a hold of you about that country still. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, man. All right, brother. All right, take God care. Bless. All right, you too. Bye bye. I would like to thank. Um, well, first of all, for more information about Jack Russell and Great White, you can visit www.jackrussellgreatwhiteband.com and also on Facebook, www.facebook.com backslash Jack Russell's Great White. You can purchase the latest album by Jack Russell's Great White entitled He Saw It Coming in Amazon.com. Let me tell you guys, it's a great album. It really is. Uh, five stars, great production, engineering, uh, very, very uh, well-orchestrated album. I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, very special thanks to uh, Billy James of Glass Onion PR for arranging this interview, the great Billy James, for arranging the interview with Jack Russell, and, of course, the dynamic duo of Doug and Don Newsom of BBS Radio for making the magic happen for each and every broadcast of Interviewing the Legends. If you have comments, suggestions for the show, please contact me at interviewingthelegends at gmail.com and please subscribe to my YouTube channel for the very latest interviews. Um, at, and you can go to my YouTube channel at Interviewing the Legends with Ray Shasho and uh, it's real news. Don't forget to purchase a copy of my book entitled Check the G's, The True Story of a Neglected American Family and Their Wacky Family Business. Available now at Amazon.com. I promise you'll live it. And coming soon, The Rockstar Chronicles, which uh, amasses a collection of 50 or more recent interviews with the greatest musicians, artists of all time. It's in production. It'll be released uh, sometime in 2020, probably the early 2020s. So uh, that'll be series one out of probably a series of four or five. And uh, that wraps it up, everybody. Have a great weekend and a great week. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. For listening to Interviewing the Legends, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call 941 877 
1552 or visit us at publicityworksagency.com specializing in author and music artist publicity plans we shine when we make you shine tune in to interviewing the legends every tuesday at 7 p.m pacific time on bbs radio station one